Back with us on the Sports Mag Zone, and as the protest movement around the Jacob Blake shooting gathers space, Toronto FC striker Josie Altidor from Major League Soccer says he's part of a group prepared to buy Real Salt Lake following a contentious comment from the team's owner, Deloy Hansen. The MLS was forced to postpone five games on Wednesday after players from Inter Miami and Atlanta United walked off the field ahead of their game in Fort Lauderdale. Following the players' decision to not play, Hansen told a local radio station, quote, The disrespect was profound to me, personally. He says the decision to protest has taken the wind out of his desire to invest in the club. Altidore responded to Hansen's remarks on Twitter. He said, he needs to sell the team then. I'm involved in a group that's ready to purchase it. Time for change. Well, a large selection of MLS players supported the decision by the Inter Miami and Atlanta United players on Wednesday. Altidore also endorsed that decision. He posted a tweet, proud of sports tonight and all of my guys in MLS. For a long time, I've been talking on this program about the use of political capital. Political capital isn't something that you attach to persons in representational politics. Political capital is a term that can be used to describe persons in a chosen field who have built up a certain amount of goodwill around themselves by virtue of their exploits, the manner with which they carry themselves, a combination of both, and other positive things to the extent that they have the respect of others and they have the ability by virtue of what they've accomplished and the positions they hold to influence others to take a particular course of action or to abide by a certain set of decisions. That's what political capital is applied um, outside of the arena in which it was coined. Here is Josie Altidore, a man with political capital and clearly a man with real capital as well, given his uh, successes as a footballer, saying, well, Mr. Owner, if, w if, if players protesting in support of Black Lives Matter cause you to feel as downcast as you do and prove to be a disincentive for you to invest, then walk away, sell us the club, and leave. What say you to that? I'm in full um, support of Altador because he's right. If we are trying to effect change, and this is a big matter, and you can't understand the pain that we feel as black people, then you don't deserve to be our owner. Lance? Yeah, of course, Altador has Haitian roots. He still has relatives living in Haiti. Of course, Naomi Osaka's dad is Haitian as well. Haiti, one of the most condemned and uh, oppressed black nations globally. And um, his, his, uh, the resonance of what he is um, uh, coming out with on this on this issue um, is significant for me because here is a player a player who is ready to put his his funds and his capital on the line um, for ownership of a club that he feels isn't being represented by the person who currently owns the club and in this in this current climate um, his his outburst if you could call it that is is well intended i think but george and lance you know when owners and people in authority come out now like trump came out and said what he said um del loy hansen he came out and said how he felt it brings into question the people that you respect and look up to he's the owner of this club how does he really see these black players then by voicing his opinion like that is it he's is it that he just sees them as people that come to play to win so that he can benefit? Because clearly he has no regard for the values and the morals that they hold and the things that are close and dear to their hearts. This goes back to a few years ago. My basketball producer, Orion Buchanan, can straighten one fact out for me. Yeah. I'm trying to recall who it was. I don't want to misattribute the quote. Someone infamously a few years ago said to LeBron James, shut up and dribble. I, 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 it, was, it wasn't Trump. It was, ah, there you go, right. So, 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 so ah, Ingram, Laura, oh, yes, 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 shut up and dribble. So it's the same mentality from the perspective of Deloy Hansen yeah. and Real Salt Lake. Players are supposed to play. Players should be seen on court. Players should perform, then go back to their lives. And that is why the Milwaukee Bucks and the NBA teams have taken the stance that they have because they're saying, we are good enough to entertain you. So while I am on court, playing, I'm safe. While I'm on the football field, the NFL, National Football League, I'm safe. 
while I'm playing soccer, I'm safe. The moment I change from my team uniform into my civilian clothes, jump in my car and drive on the road, I am unsafe. The moment I leave the sporting arena, I am unsafe and I am subject to the same abuses that any other person trapped or with it almost white America makes it look as if being black and being in the skin of a black person is a trap. Once I'm in that kind of circumstance, I am fair game for any abuses. That is why they have taken the action that they've taken. And I'm saying America, a reckoning has come. I heard Shannon Sharp this morning call out the legislators in Congress who've been there for decades saying, wait a minute, why is it that basketballers, players in the WNBA, players in the MLS, have to be taking this stance against racism and inequality? What about the legislators that have voted in cycle after cycle to govern? Where are you and the impact that you have made successfully to change the reality of black people and minority groups in the United States? Why is it that sports men and women athletes have to be doing what politicians are paid to do and elected to do? It is a disgrace. And everybody in Congress who's been there 30 years, yeah, I'm a 30-year congressman, 35-year congresswoman, and you wear that as a badge of honor. What have you achieved in that time where the longest running problem in the United States of America is concerned. What have you done to influence change in that circumstance? That's the question. Mm. Huge point there made, George, because the legislation is what needs to happen here, and that's what everyone is, is, is fighting for. Um, I know a lot of supporters of the U.S. president will suggest, and I've heard them say, that racism didn't start with um, Donald Trump, and they are right. Donald yeah. Trump didn't start racism. Um, it's just that based on the figure and his narrative, uh, a lot of people in the USA who are angered by the level of racism in the country, they don't feel that uh, Donald Trump is the person to best represent uh, the kind of change that they would, they would want to see. But George, you're right. Legislation is what needs to happen here. And it's very, very unfortunate that these sports stars and these um, big name celebrities have to be taking the lead. It's not really their job. It's just that they recognize that something has to be done and they've reached a point in their lives and their a position in the United States that they're willing to sacrifice so much to trigger the necessary change. It's true, Lance, what you say, but what I do know is the fact that these uh, celebrities, if we want to call them that, or people that you know we respect, if they continue to push like they are pushing, it, the, those in authorities will have not, no choice but to um, step up and effect some sort of change. They will, ha they will be forced, they will have no choice but to ensure that legislation is put in place. We have the singers coming out. Um, we brought it on the zone yesterday, comments from Halsey. We have um, LeBron. We have all the players stepping up. So the authorities will have their hands tied behind their backs and they will feel compelled to effect change and that is the kind of force that we need. Just before we leave it, one of the things that needs to happen and people trying to understand this issue, the power of the police unions in the United States is a huge problem. And when people talk about defunding the police and, and, and changing the way the police engage and operate, at the heart of that change is the power of the police unions because when, the, when police personnel in the USA, those who are institutionally racist, and there are many of them like that, they know that they have the power, they have the support rather, and the backing of their powerful unions, which will fight tooth and nail against attempts to take certain levels of disciplinary action against them or to mete out certain sanctions to them slash punishment in the event of a conflagration in the event of a controversial incident that they're involved in. And that comfort, that cushion, that bed of pillows that the unions present for the police personnel, that is at the base of the behavior, the conduct of policemen who you are, and, and women who you are saying, wait, how can someone unarmed be walking away from you and you fire seven shots into their back? How can a 12-year-old be wielding a toy gun? You shoot that 12-year-old in the head. What kind of sick 
mind operates like that. Well, I can tell you, it's the mind that is comforted by the fact that if the worst happens to them, if they are involved in what many people describe as terrible incidents, they have the support to emerge unscathed. And this effort now by the box is to push legislators into the direction of passing legislation to weaken the control of the unions, to make police personnel know that, oh, you know, I need to govern my conduct because I can't do anything and get away with it as I have in the past. That's what's being Checks fought for balances. here. Checks and balances. That's what's being fought for here. Break time. Change is what we really need. Cut me open, cut you open, res the color, every single human being bleeds.